All right, welcome back everyone. I hope you're enjoying JungleCon. Now we're getting ready to go to our next speaker. He is the CEO of Incrementum Digital, an Amazon-focused marketing agency that advises brands and manages millions of dollars in advertising spend. Widely followed as a thought leader on marketing and selling on Amazon, he understands that success requires the right advertising strategy and applies his expertise to empower other sellers through his podcast, E-Commerce Mindset. After growing and selling an internet life insurance agency in 2014, this next speaker has since built two seven-figure private label brands by understanding keywords, search optimization, and sponsored ads, and now wants to help you do the same. Today, he'll be covering the basics of attracting buyers and driving sales with Amazon advertising and how you can start thinking about ways to structure your advertising strategies. Let's welcome our next speaker, Leron Hirschkorn. Three, two, one. Hi, this is Leron Hirschhorn. I am the uh, CEO and founder of Incrementum Digital. I've been uh, a seller on Amazon for the last seven years. Um, and in this coming presentation, basically what I'm going to do is um, uh, last year, um, towards the end of last year, I did a six-week uh, seminar uh, with Jungle Scout all going through PPC. Um, what I'm going to attempt to do in this presentation is take you through some of the most important highlights from that, as well as showing you um, a couple of reports. One is kind of a fairly new one that wasn't in that in that presentation that I think is really important uh, that I want you to understand and look at um, and understand why. Um, so I'm going to start with the basics, but I'm going to try to move a little bit fast through that so I can get a lot of information um, in. And you can obviously always go back to the recording and and um, you know probably uh, get this so that you can um, rewatch it. I want to be able to share as much value with you in this. Uh, presentation as uh, possible. So I'm going to share my screen here, go through the slides. Um, and then uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on social media or through email. Um, and I am happy to help. So just a little bit about me, um, been marketing online for the last 12 years, um, Amazon, uh, the last seven years. I have a podcast called E-Commerce Mindset um, and also a Facebook group with the same name. Uh, both uh, both are free. And I live in New York um, with my wife and daughter. So quickly going through um, some of the initial slides here. PPC, obviously, very important. Why? When I started on Amazon, there were maybe four ads on page one. Now there's 10 plus ads um, on page one. You need to advertise, um, you know, even you know, people that we've worked with, clients that, you know, in the past have not advertised, um, have kind of been forced to because the competition is advertising, they're catching up on, on review counts, and you really need to advertise. I think that's pretty clear today. Um, but PPC will only work well um, if you have um, a great listing. Um, Amazon ads will not save a dying business. You need to have a great product, obviously, and then great listing. I recommend, you know, a product that is differentiated, not exactly the same as all the competitors, unless you're in a very niche or something that is not, doesn't have many um, competitors. Importance of an Amazon listing. Obviously you need to have great photos. Um, I really like to use the photos to sell a product, the text and and the, the title and the bullets to really use, use more for SEO purposes. And people don't read everything, but the photos they look at, I like to use photos, not to just show product but to sell a product, you want to have A plus content, lifestyle images. I really recommend all these things in place before you launch. Get brand registry. It's very easy today. You can have a pending trademark. And I, I recommend that. Having high quality copy. Um, keyword research is really important. Jungle Scout has its own training on keyword research. So I won't dive too much into that. But keyword research, looking at competitors, seeing what they rank for, understanding search volume and relevance highly important um, in your listing, in your title. I recommend your title have the first five words, really include like important keywords, then having a dash and maximizing your space um, in the title, using bullets to have features and benefits, um, kind of like what, what you see here. Recently, Amazon has um, said you shouldn't have capitals in the beginning of, of bullets and listings were getting suspended. So probably recommend not to do this strategy anymore of bullets um, in the beginning. Video really important. I think video is super important. And it's only going to get more important in your listing. You can use it. You can list, use it in video ads. You can use it in a brand storefront. I think soon to come will be video um, that you can put into A plus. Highly recommend you have video. Um, you know, maybe start with something 
low cost if you have a product that's not proven yet, but on your best selling products, worthwhile investing into um, into pro video. And if you have the budget, invest in pro video starting out. A plus content, we focus a lot on infographics the way you see here. Again, we don't use a lot of the text fields. We really focus on infographics, make them big, readable. People don't really read. They want to look at the at the images. Really important on mobile also. Um, when you're creating A+, plus, look at mobile um, and how it looks on mobile. When you create it, you can click a button mobile. Mob I would go with a mobile first approach. More people are shopping on mobile than on desktop. Um, also with your listing, the title, um, everything, check what it looks like on mobile because less characters are available in the search results on mobile. Again, you want to get some important points in the... Um, you know, before people click into the listing so that they can see it on mobile A plus content. We really use it to also cross sell products. Like you see here, you can have a module showing other products um, as well. And again, showing more um, benefits and what your product can do. Uh, important to really understand this sessions and conversions. The reason why is because if your conversions are poor, PPC is not going to work. You really need to have conversions for advertising to work. So in your business reports, you can see sessions, which is the page view. So you can see if you're getting traffic, which is one part of the equation. The second part of the equation is conversions. You need both in order to have a great business. Traffic and conversions, the PPC side is the traffic, your listing, your product, your pricing, reviews, everything else is your conversion strategy. You need to have both to work well. This is your sessions. And then your unit session percentage here is your conversion rate, essentially. As a whole, um, it's hard to give blanket numbers, but as a whole, products should really have a higher than 10% conversion rate. Um, if you have very high price products, they could work with less. You know, If you have $200, $300 products, maybe a 5% or 6% or conversion rate could, could work. Um, if you have you know, consumables, products people are buying over and over every month, your conversion rate should be higher because people are coming back to just buy organically 20 to 40%. Um, 20 to 40 is a, is a really good range to shoot for. I would say baseline minimum, you should be shooting for a 10% conversion rate given products priced, you know, between 10 and $75 or so. Um, elements that are going to affect your conversion rate, obviously your listing quality re reviews price. The better your conversion rate, the better PPC will work. Brand registry, really important to get brand registry. Um, you, you get a lot of benefits other than like brand protection, IP protection. Um, you get access to the Vine program, which helps you get reviews, A plus content. And then the, on the advertising side, you get you get a lot of benefits like running sponsored brand ads, uh, sponsored display ads, um, being able to use Amazon attribution where you can track outside traffic, um, lots of benefits, brand analytics, which you can see a lot of data, search frequency, um products that are frequently bought with yours repurchase rates lots of great data there um highly recommend you have brand registry before you launch let's talk a little bit about campaign types we're going to talk about here sponsored ads um obviously are what shows up kind of like in the in the search results and on people's pages under like products related to this to this item um sponsored brand ads they show up at the top, um, like headline style. They also show up here, like at the bottom of, of search results pages and at the bottom of listings like this, they can drive traffic to a brand storefront or to a um, product listing page. When they're on the on detail pages, they only go to the storefront. So having a brand storefront, really important. Also, you may have seen recently, Amazon is showing these big blocks on certain listings of featuring brand storefront pages. I think more of that's going to roll out. And having a brand storefront, I think, really, really important um, going forward. I think Amazon is really going to try to, to push that. With a brand storefront, you can also have followers. People will follow the brand. And, and Amazon soon is going to start letting you push out messages to those followers, um, whether it's deals or coupons or, or whatever it is. When people follow you, um, the way to get those followers are through Amazon posts and through um, brand storefront. Sponsored display ads, um, these show up kind of like under the um, bullets, under the buy box. Um, you can do target specific ASINs, um, and you can also do retargeting. People who visited your listing or visited competitor listings will get these ads served to them on Amazon and off Amazon. Um, sponsored product ads, easy to set up. Um, the campaign naming, I recommend you have a naming structure where you look at a campaign, you know what it is. So for example, product name dash, um, you know, product name dash, um, you know, uh, keyword or KW 
manual, for example, or um, something where you understand exactly the ASIN, you can search by ASINs later in, in all your campaigns and find it. So have a naming convention, obviously two types of sponsored product ads, automatic um, and manual campaigns, pros and cons to both of those. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, managing, you know, there's software, there's hiring someone doing it, doing it yourself. I recommend if you're just starting that you learn and do it yourself as you scale. Um, it, you know, then could make sense to hire somebody. Um, there's lots of great software tools, um, on the market as well that can help you by, you know, optimizing bids, um, you know, harvesting keywords from auto broad phrase and moving them back in, into campaigns. I, I recommend you use it. If you're just starting with one or two products, you can manage things manually as well without, uh, without software, um, costs are cost per click. It's a bidding system. So, um, the, the the amount you put in as your bid is not necessarily what you're going to pay. You're going to pay probably less than that based on how uh, much the competition is bidding. Manual campaigns, main benefits is you have controls on control on bidding for every single keyword. Um, and you can really bid further up or down based on how a keyword is performing. The downside is requires more work to optimize and you have to do keyword research. Um, you can have keyword targeting as well as product targeting. So you can target ASINs as well as specific keywords, automatic, Amazon chooses pretty much everything for you. Um, benefit is kind of less work, allows you to discover more keywords, but you have a lot less control. Recommend you have an auto and a manual campaign for every product. We usually structure three campaigns, auto, manual keyword campaign with three ad groups, broad phrase and exact, and then a um, manual ASIN targeting campaign. And then we will sometimes isolate keywords that either have high search volume or we kind of want to be more aggressive on into their own um, separate campaigns. Um, bidding strategies, I'll just talk a little bit. We generally go with dynamic bids down only as our strategy. With automatic campaigns, you're very limited. Your targeting that you could do is you know, these types, close match, loose match, substitute and complements. So much more limited in your bidding, but you can target bidding different bids for each one of these um, categories, as you see here, based on how each one of these is um, performing. Okay, um, keyword targeting, um, pros and cons to these broad match um, benefit is you cast a wide net. It's a broad, basically if you're targeting the keyword, um, wireless headphones, as long as wireless headphones is somewhere in that search, not in that order, your ad can show up. So large wireless shower headphones or whatever, um, your ad can show up for that. Um, downside is it's not as targeted. So you could be showing up and people clicking into your product and seeing, oh, it's not water resistant um, and it's not as, not as targeted, but you get to cast a wide net. Phrase is kind of somewhere in the middle. Wireless headphones would need to be together, like large wireless headphones for shower or wireless headphones. Um, so it's a little bit more targeted, still casting somewhat of a, of a wider net than just targeting the word exactly. Um, the downside, again, may not be as targeted, but you're kind of in between um, um, exact and broad. And exact is basically targeting this keyword only, customer searches, wireless headphones, exactly that, only that your ad might show up. But anything other than that, if you're targeting exact match, it wouldn't show up other than plural, singulars, misspelling, certain times Amazon can still show your, your ad benefit. It's very, very targeted, um, allows you to reach your ideal customer. Downside, less. there's gonna be less impressions, less potential reach on those keywords. Again, we target all three and we optimate, optimize each and every one. Um, recommendations for setting up your campaigns. Um, use the first 10 days, collect data, um, set up auto campaign manual, manual product targeting. Um, use keywords that have search volume, high search volume that are relevant to your product, um, as well as not search volume. Find keywords that are long tail, that are very targeted, right? Do, do a broad range of, uh, of keyword research, and then also find ASINs to target um, in your ads. I recommend when you start out to not do category targeting within the ASIN campaigns. Um, it could be too broad. And if you don't have a lot of reviews, that, that may not work, but potentially something to test. Um, optimizing. Starting with a smaller budget gives you the ability to kind of like optimize as you go, um, but will take you longer to get data. Starting with a higher budget will allow you to kind of get data really quickly and move. Also, um, launching new products, going with higher budget and being aggressive can help you rank um, organically. Um, additional campaigns that you may want to run, um, you know, we separate out branded keywords from um, unbranded keywords, meaning any keyword, if my brand name was, you know, um, Apple, 
then I would be putting Apple broad match, phrase match, exact match into a separate campaign, calling it a branded campaign um, because I really want to dominate. I want to make sure I'm showing up for my branded keywords and I want to have that as a, as a separate campaign and also measure over time is my branded search is increasing. Do more people recognize my brand name, more people searching my brand name. Um, also, another campaign is a, a defense campaign. You want to target your own ASINs as much as you can if you have multiple products and, and they're kind of like in the same category um, or, or in the same niche. Um, protect your protect your 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 real estate uh, on your listings. Protect your brand name as much as possible. If you look at a brand Zesty Paws, I recommend you look at all their listings. Look at Bulletproof. Um, look at their listings, and you'll see what brand, what great brand protection um, is. You can also create a separate campaign targeting competitor brand names. Just realize they may be expensive. If I'm selling a private label coffee brand and I'm targeting the keyword Starbucks, most people that are searching Starbucks are probably um, probably interested in purchasing um, Starbucks and are going to be more likely to buy that. Um, so, so it may be expensive for me to win customers over targeting uh, competitor um, brands. Um, when you're starting out new campaigns, I recommend higher bids to get more visibility, get data, um, and then um, you know make decisions based on um, based on what the results are like in terms of moving bids up or down or adding negative keywords or pausing keywords. Um, for launch purposes, I recommend you, you be aggressive. Um, adjusting bids, I always recommend you look at your cost per click column and you turn that on. Um, in this case here, where you see a 49% A cost, if I want to pull that A cost down, I'm going to have to lower my cost per click less than my bid in order to bring that down. Um, and if I want to push harder on a keyword and get more aggressive on it, I would raise my bid above my cost per click. And you can calculate exactly based on your, you know, target A cost and your, you know, cost per click where you need to be in terms of how much you can pay per click in order to get to your um, target A cost. Okay. Negative keywords allow you to add a specific keyword that you won't show up for. If you're seeing in your search term report, which I'll show you keywords that are irrelevant, I would recommend adding them as negative exact. Negative phrase don't use as much. Uh, I use it for, you know, if I see one particular word throughout a lot of search terms that are um, not relevant, then let's say I'm, I'm, I'm selling uh, private label Bluetooth headphones and I see in a lot of my search terms, people searching for Sony and, and that my ad is coming up for a lot of keywords related to Sony, by adding negative phrase Sony, any search that includes Sony, my uh, ad just won't show up for. Okay, pausing keywords. Generally, this is good for exact match types, um, but pausing broad and phrase match, usually with those, I like to um, optimize by lowering bids or raising bids. I like to lower the bids if they're not performing well, but they're still getting some sales. If they're not driving any sales and they've spent enough money for you to have enough data, then in that case, um, I might pause those. Um, sponsored brand ads. These are the ads they'll they'll show up on top here, like you see. And also, I, sh I showed earlier some um, places where they show up. Um, they show multiple products in your ad. You can send people to a landing page, a product listing page, or your storefront. Um, generally, Amazon says storefronts perform better, um, and that depends kind of if you have a well-optimized storefront um, or not. Um, landing page kind of looks like this. Um, you create it by obviously going to, to sponsored brands um, and um, you can list multiple products um, here. Um, and I recommend that you uh, typically needs at least three SKUs. You can also put um, copy here, like you see, um, and they also show up in the bottom of search results as well. And inside of listings, um, you can have these sort of lifestyle images as well under something called custom image beta. Um, shows up really well on mobile and desktop on um, pages like this. Um, the way we use copy, you saw the copy on top, is we look at the main keyword or the, the most common keywords people are searching for combined with some kind of something people really, you know, like about um, like about the product. So, um, you know, for example, um, this product here is, uh, I think it's the Jungle Sticks maybe. So, um, um, the, you know, we, we would look at, you know, um, um, whatever the main, the main keyword is, um, and, and adding in some kind of benefit, right. Of what people like easy to use, easy to use, um, roasting, uh, or, you know, jungle, whatever the keyword roasting sticks, right. Whatever people are, are using or, um, very sturdy, you know, rolling stick, roll, um, roasting sticks, et cetera. So we use a keyword and some kind of feature people like about the product. Um, we recommend testing headlines. 
um, testing copy, testing the, the different products that, that you show, testing product landing page versus storefront. So creating multiple campaigns um, and testing. Um, this is sending people to a brand storefront page. You can send people to any one of the pages or the homepage based on what is most relevant um, to the ad that you're showing and sending them to a particular page. The benefit is you can cross sell them multiple products. They can get to kind of look at your storefront, um, et cetera. Okay, um, this is a custom image beta. So you see this takes up a lot of space on mobile, shows up on mobile. Um, you can add a lifestyle image there, really showcase what a product um, looks like. Highly recommend not enough people are, are using this. Um, again, test different lifestyle images and see which, ad, which campaign is performing um, the best. Video ads performing really, really well. Highly recommend that you run these needs brand registry, all sponsored brands do. Um, we use slideshow videos. If we don't have like pro videos, very low cost. We use a program called biteable.com to take our images, put them into a slideshow format and create, create videos. Um, you know, again, if you're not investing in, you know, pro videos, obviously these things take up a lot of uh, space in the search results, both mobile and um, desktop and have been working um, really, really well. They need to be 45 seconds or less. I recommend 15 to 20 seconds. Um, you can't talk about, you can't show reviews or star ratings um, or call to action. Um, and um, really recommend to have a video that doesn't require sound for it to be effective because the sound is off by default. Okay. Um, so we talked about using, using um, you know, um, slideshow. Um, and um, we use Biteable for that. There's other other software tools that you can um, do it with. For your best selling products, really recommend investing in high quality video. Obviously, there's lots of different services out there where you can do it, including the Jungle Scout Market, where you can find people, um, you know, to, um, to you know to to help you with that. A um, little bit about um, stores. Again, stores convert really well. Highly recommend that you create um, brand storefronts. You can have video there, tell your brand story. Um, and I highly recommend it. Amazon is pushing kind of more traffic there. Um, and again, one thing that's not here is these big blocks um, that are showing up under certain brands, driving people to the storefronts. Um, store Spotlight ad allows you to actually send people to multiple pages within your storefront. Um, so for example, if you have a big catalog and somebody searching your brand name and you have branded searches and you don't know exactly what they're looking for, you can send them to your furniture page, home decor page, and your toilet brush page, for example. So really depending on the keywords that you're targeting, um, generally this works well for branded keywords. Um, and if people are searching your brand name, um, I highly recommend you work with store spotlight, um, ads. Um, this, these are some, some examples of, of uh, storefronts and landing pages. Sponsored display ads, um, you can add copy to these as well, um, which, is, which is cool. They again show up under the buy box, underneath bullets. Um, you can um, target ASINs um, as well as doing retargeting. We've seen really good results with um, product targeting, retargeting. Um, really is dependent on the product if it works well and if you get it if you can get it to spend um, any ASINs that are working on your sponsored product campaigns you can move over or you should move over to sponsor display product targeting um, you can also do a lot of research using brand analytics to find competitor ASINs to um, put there or again using tools like in jungle scap um, so audience views is the retargeting product targeting is the um, product targeting is the um, targeting ASINs benefits you can see here one of our, um, you know, um, uh, campaigns. You can get very low cost per click um, and uh, a good A cost. Not as many. This doesn't have as much competition um, today for um, bid optimization. Um, again, kind of spoke about um, find ASINs that you can target, competitors, complementary products. Um, look at your auto campaign, manual campaigns. Use brand analytics. Um, you can use brand analytics and put in a search term, like if you're selling barbecue gloves do a search for barbecue you can then download this whole sheet that will find you a ton of products in that niche that you can try to target um you know with um, sponsored display because the cost per click is a little bit less um because it's not as competitive today you can target like a wider set of products and uh potentially still do well even with sort of loosely related um related products okay launching product with ppc um you know, there's a honeymoon period when when you launch a new product, it gets um, 
you know, it, it's easier to rank that product. Um, if you get aggressive starting out with your advertising and you're driving sales, it can really help your organic rank. Um, set campaigns. Uh, so we set these campaigns up a little bit differently than our regular campaigns. We focus on a small group of 10 to 20 keywords that are highly relevant to the product. Exact match only. We'll generally use the top of search placement where we can go up to 900% increase, be very aggressive, um, as well as targeting ASINs um, that are ranking for those 10 to 20 keywords and target them in a um, manual ASIN targeting campaign. And again, we go up to like 900% for product page placements and get very aggressive. I highly also recommend sponsor brand videos, uh, video ads targeting your major keywords when you're, when you're launching um, you know, if you can campaign organization, highly recommend you use portfolios, um, portfolios to group all the campaigns you have under a single portfolio. So you can look at a portfolio and see your sponsor product ads, your sponsor brand ads, your sponsor display ads, and see the, the whole performance of how all these, um, campaigns are, um, working and, um, all in one helps you really organize, um, measuring your performance. You can look at a cost or total a cost. Total a cost is your total spend versus your, your total ad spend versus your total revenue. A lot of people target 10%. When you have a new product, it's probably going to be higher than that um, for total ACoS, but on you know more mature products, 10% is a good target. More mature products, you can start to pull back when you're in growth mode. You know you can go up to 15, 20%, um, but 10% is kind of a good number for total ACoS. Or if you're selling you know 100,000 a month, spending 10,000 on ads is kind of like a typical uh, type of number and should, should give you kind of healthy uh, overall margins. Um, okay. Um, other metrics, um, you know, to check if the, um, you know, you want to have a healthy balance between organic sales and ad sales. Good. You know, definitely I recommend better than 50, 50, 50, 50 is kind of like the worst case organic to ads. Ideally you have 60 or 70% of your sales coming from, um, organic. I think it's been harder to get 70%, but a good kind of target is 60% organic, 40% um, advertising. Um, let's go into a little bit of the of the cycle of a product, right? If a product is new, growing, or more mature, it should help you think about the strategy. New products be very, you know, um, you know, it could be very aggressive while you're building up reviews, um, you know, and then start to pull back a little bit from that three to six months in, maybe from bring down the ACOS, the tacos. Um, go into kind of growth phase where maybe maybe you're going for that 10% and then more mature products that have a lot of reviews, you can start pulling back um, from there and focus more on profitability. Um, and again, the, your strategy should be also based on the type of product you have. If you have a consumable type product, something people are buying over and over again, you should be more aggressive and think about lifetime value of a client versus something that's a one-time uh, one purchase. Um, bid optimization, you can use software. Um, or do it um, manually. Um, I'll show you. Um, I'll go into um, uh, live now into um, you know campaign here and show you um, you know how how I would do bid bid optimization. Um, let me just look at this is one of my my campaigns so I can show it to you. Um, so want to look at your cost per click okay and your cost per click here if i want to bring down the a cost which now is 38 i do want to bring it down somewhat we're starting to kind of lower bids a little bit so off the cost per click if i want to bring this up i'll push higher on the bid than the cost per click if i want to bring this down i'm gonna i'm gonna um lower it etc so you see all the bids here are different because we're consistently optimizing the bids based on the results. You see here, the ACoS here was quite high, 114%. I was paying 55 cents, but now I already have the bid. Actually, this is paused already, but now I already have the bid. We already brought down the bid to, to 10 cents um, because we want to pull back on this. Here, we spent a bunch of money, didn't get sales. It's already paused, right? So we're consistently going in here um, and, um, and optimizing. Keyword research and harvesting. Um, um, Jungle Scout has some great um, tools and training on keyword research won't really go um, go into that but think about all the ways a customer might be finding your products reverse engineer your competitor there's keyword scout where you could do that and find keywords that are driving sales 
um, for your um, for your competition. Want to take you through the search term report um, quickly here. Um, search term report is one of the key reports that will help you optimize your um, your ads in your, in your business. Um, so the search term report, this is an example for sponsor product search term report. There's sponsor brand one as well. Um, I take the top row here and I will always filter it. Um, and then when you filter it, you can really sort through, okay, where I already sorted this by descending by spend. Um, and you can kind of see, you know, where have I spent the most money? Um, here's the ACOS of 34. Here's 20, I spent 26, the ACOS is 110. Um, you know, maybe I need to go in and, you know, make some, make some, um, make some changes. Now this is coming from this ASIN targeting. So maybe it needs to be, maybe the bids need to be brought down or, you know, maybe I need to pause it. Um, the cost per click is, is kind of high. The click through is pretty good. Something you should be looking at is click through rate. Um, I think generally, you know, 0.3 or higher is, is pretty decent. Um, again, if you're in the top of search, you might be getting a higher click through, but if all, also low click through shows, um, either your placement is really poor or something is really not, uh, very relevant, um, because people aren't, are seeing the ad and not clicking. So maybe the keyword is not relevant. Um, you see your a cost, I can sort here and, and say, you know, show me only, you know, the, the poor a cost, which the blanks would be, there's no sales. So if I want to see it, everything that hasn't driven sales or has had a high a cost, I might just look at this, for example, and again, identify both the um, what I'm targeting and then what is the actual customer search term. And again, if there's things here that are irrelevant, I could add them as negative um, as negative um, you know keywords. Um, I would also generally look at things based on um, based on the particular um, portfolio they're in. Probably, if I have things organized well in portfolio, uh, when I look at something based on a on a portfolio, I'm only looking basically at that product and then I can see uh, where it is if it's if it's in a particular um, auto campaign or in a manual campaign um, etc or you can really look at things um, or you can just look at things um, by on a campaign basis um, if that's easier for you and and look at a smaller list and then organize um, by you know sales a costs click through rate, um, and see what optimizations you need to do um, based on this. If you need to add negative keywords, if you need to optimize bids, you can also find search terms to add back into your campaigns. So for example, um, let's go, let me go back here. I'm going to clear this um, filter. Um, you know, if I want to find basically everything that has done well, okay, generally, okay, I'm going to find, I'm going to find the keywords here. And then, so this is an exact match, so it's not relevant. These are ASINs. Um, these ASINs are not in auto campaigns. If they were in auto, I would want to move them to a manual ASIN targeting, but here's a phrase match and here's a keyword. If I'm not already targeting that, I want to add that back into the campaign. Um, okay. Here is, um, you know, something I came from, a, from an auto campaign because this is showing the star here it means it came from auto, as you can see, and this is something that converted. Now, again, this only had one, um, one sale, the ACOS was really good. Okay. 1%, but this may or may not be relevant. If it only had one sale, is it enough data? I don't know. I can either test it or I can, um, or I can see, I probably wouldn't add this. The reason is because it's a very long tail keyword. I don't think many people are searching this. So I probably wouldn't add this back in. I don't think it's really going to get much volume, but this is how you can identify targets and you want to see like did this drive just one sale did it drive multiple sales if it drove multiple sales you know better indication to add it but you can still add things that converted once and kind of test them out moving keywords across campaigns so if something converted from a broad match phrase match you want to add that back into your campaigns but also across different types of campaigns from sponsored product for example if a particular um search from converted and sponsored products you can also move that to the sponsored brand campaign to the video campaign um, etc. Okay. Okay. Um, and I want to finish off with showing you some, um, some campaign types that I think, um, or some, some, um, brands that are doing things really well. And I want to show you also one more report called a search term, um, impression report. So I showed you some of the, some, some of the brand defense campaigns. So if you search for bulletproof coffee, okay. 
they're doing a very good job of defending their space. Okay. They have an ad up here. This goes to their storefront. They have ads across all their, their campaigns. Um, if I click on one of their listings, um, I don't see any sponsored display campaigns showing up, but you could have other products of your own here. Um, and then, um, and then um, here, they're also using virtual bundles. Highly recommend that um, as well. If you have brand registry, you can, you can do that. But then look at the sponsored products, okay? You can see here um, all, the, all their own products, right, that they're doing. They're doing a great job of brand um, defense. You'll see a lot of brands don't do this um, very, very well. Um, they're leaving, you know, a lot of space uh, open. Um, and you know that's room for competitors to to come in. Um, take a look at this brand, okay? Um, Zesty Paws um, again, up here, up here, and then you look, you click in on one of their listings, and they dominate, right? Brand defense, they pr they're protecting. This is a separate campaign structure that I recommend you have. The last thing I want to do is I want to go show you a newer type of report. This is called the um, search term impression share report. You can download it from the reports. Um, you can get this from sponsored products and sponsored ads. I think it's very, it's an excellent, excellent report to help you. Um, so I'm going to sort the top row here. And what this is showing you is how well you rank compared to your competition for a particular keyword. How much of the overall impressions for ads that exist, how much of that are you getting? It can give you an indication for how much search volume something has and how much further you have room to push on that particular keyword. So for example, this is one of my products. Um, you know, um, I saw that on a, um, I, I found new keywords to add here to, to campaigns. Um, so for example, my product is, you know, I'm, is an A2 light pad. Um, in this case, I'm number three in overall, um, in overall, you know, impressions. Okay. In this, in this particular, uh, and you'll see it again multiple times because it's showing up under under different campaigns. I also want to take a look at my ACOS here, right? So I can look at, okay, well, where am I getting a, a decent ACOS? So I'm going to take this out, for example. And where am I getting a good ACOS where, you know, I have I have room, right? So some of these I'm number one, great. But how about on this one? I'm number nine. This is actually for my own brand name. Um, I should be pushing a lot harder on this uh, on this particular um, search term, I'm number nine for this for this search term. My competitors are going after my my brand name. Okay, I need to push harder on this keyword. Okay, how about um, this one? My product is a light board for for tracing. Um, I'm number twenty four, and the ACOS here is three point nine three percent. Given again, I don't have a ton of data for the last thirty days, but this represents, you know, amazing ACOS. I have opportunity and there's 24 other people that are getting more impressions than I am. I'm only capturing 0.44% of the total impressions that are available. Um, so, um, and, um, you know, it shows me I've gotten 103 impressions. So to some extent I can multiply this out and try to figure out what the total impressions are, but products show up multiple times. It's not an exact science, but can give you some, some, some really some, some great indication of where you can push harder. And, you know, I would even kind of um, eliminate this filter because there could be opportunities, um, again, where you don't have enough data here. And if you push harder, you can get more impressions and then get enough data to make better decisions. Could even set up a separate campaign that you kind of title, you know, data from search term impression report and set that up, target, put a budget on it and see which keywords you're able to kind of get more out of from this um, report. So it shows me the, the total impression share and the search term impression rank um, across my brand. You, there's a sponsored brand search term impression point, sponsored products. They're both fairly new. Highly recommend you download these um, and that you um, that you work through them. Um, I hope this was a, a pretty good overview. Some of this was more basic, some of this um, a little bit more um, advanced, but I hope this gave you a good a good overview of uh, of Amazon PPC. Maybe there were some new things here um, you hadn't seen before. Um, and thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to um, present. You can reach out to me, uh, Liran at incrementumdigital.com. Incrementum Digital is our site. We help sellers um, in lots of different areas in uh, marketing uh, on Amazon, including managing ads and uh, full brand management. Again, thank you um, for the opportunity to present to you. 
All right, thank you, Liram, for sharing how others can start thinking about the various ways to structure their advertising strategies. That was a really great session because understanding the fundamentals of advertising before launching your first campaigns can save you from a ton of expensive mistakes. Now, I wanna hear from you. What's one advertising strategy that you recommend? Let us know in the comment section down below. And if you got any value out of the session, please let us know by giving this video a big thumbs up. Now that you understand the fundamentals of advertising, you're now ready to take things to the next level. So make sure you stick around for the next session to learn more about how you can begin optimizing your campaigns to grow your sales and become more profitable. I'll see you there.